Well, it seems the basic minimum sustainable income model has finally reached our shores. Those of us who know about this model and said that this would never be a policy adopted in America have underestimated the goals and ambitions of those who wish to rule the world. Y Combinator out of Silicon Valley is launching a very small basic income pilot program later this summer in Oakland, California. This organization is planning on giving 100 residents in the city a guaranteed monthly income of anywhere from $1,800 to $2,000 or possibly even more for 6 to 12 months. It will be funded by YC's nonprofit arm, YC Research, and led by Research Director Elizabeth Rhodes. Now keep in mind, $2,000 a month for those who are not working who would receive this supplement only amounts to $24,000 a year for those 100 residents in Oakland, California to live on. In theory, the basic income is a model that was set up to uh, supplement any other income individuals receive, even if they're receiving no income. And the idea is that how much from whom and for how long vary depending on the country or the economic system in place, but essentially monthly financial support provided by the government or other public institutions is meant to improve the quality of life. Now this model, if you really get into it, and I'll place links for it at the end of this report, I've done a lot of research on this, is designed to give corporations control of the distribution of money to the citizens of a country, region, or locale, and in a cashless society, every cent received would be measured against every cent going out creating a perfect feedback loop to these corporations providing funds to the citizens. YC openly admits in this article that technology and automation will ultimately and rapidly result in displacing jobs, human workers in the workforce, and that something must be done to bridge this transition. They stated that it's important to figure out how we can make sure people caught in that kind of transference or transition from a world where labor is needed for everything to a world where we may not need as much labor for people for certain tasks. How can we make sure those people still have an opportunity to find new skills or find new things they're interested in and make sure they don't get stuck below the poverty level? My question is, <clears throat> As we will see further in this report, it is the low wage earners jobs they're claiming like the guy that operates the fryer or the drive through window at a fast food joint that are going to be first affected by this transference of automation and technology which will be reducing the amount of jobs requiring human labor. My question is what types of new opportunities for those skills are people going to find in an inevitable world without work? In a blog post, YC said the organization had connected with Oakland City officials. A representative for the city did not specify who those might be after repeated attempts for clarification. The city of Oakland is currently helping to facilitate introductions with various community-based organizations elected officials and government agencies that will be helpful in data collection and other facts of the pilot study's design phase. YC stated that Oakland, California was chose, among other things, because of its socioeconomic diversity. YC carries a certain cachet in the tech world. When the organization throws its weight behind an idea like OpenAI, the YC research funded effort to research beneficial artificial intelligence, the industry pays close attention. Here YC says it's not necessarily the tech industry's job to manage or create social policies, but experimenting with citizens' income certainly does further conversation. Are we headed towards a world without work, a model created by the tech companies who will ultimately be the sole beneficiaries? Creating 
a global basic minimum income model was a main topic of discussion in the 2016 Economic Summit. YC is entering this experiment with no ideological bends, it claims, one way or another, and said the main study, which they plan to start after the pilot, with additional funding from as yet unknown partners or donors, will run for about five years. They also stated that in a society with so much wealth, there are all these people who can't have a base level that's reasonable right now, as we're moving toward a future where fundamentally we're creating more abundance and wealth in the world. We should figure out ways to make sure we don't have people living below poverty. Now here's just a little background. The tech industry has been aware of this paradigm shift in the form of a global labor force disruption for the past decade or more. In preparation for this great disruption they see on the horizon, they took the following steps to ensure that this trend would accelerate and they would come out ahead of the curve, even if only temporarily. Those steps include partnering with government, securing government grants for R&D, ensuring government policies and agendas that would support them during this transitional phase, executive orders, like Obama's declaration for high-performance computing, the formulation of a national strategic computing initiative, Obama's brain initiative. In the context of the grand model, this system will initially be funded and administered by government. However, the government model will yield to corporation funding the programs um, based on net profits.